solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Now, switching frames as a parent, uh, David, I have a 12-year-old girl and an 8-year-old boy. Mm. As I'm going through this conversation, I'm wondering, you know, what is it that I, as a parent, I can I can do to, to A, stoke that mindset, and B, you know, you talk about running this interpersonal dynamics course at Stanford. What would the equivalent of that course look for a 10-year-old? You know, what, what, what are the kinds of things that we as parents need to bear in mind to, to develop to help kids build these interpersonal skills as they grow? Well, there's a, there's books and there's a field called uh, PET, Parent Effectiveness Training, mm -hmm. which is very similar concepts. For one thing, with kids, you don't label them. Uh, you, you focus on behavior, you don't label them. Mm. Let me give an example. When I was, I guess, 10, 9, uh, 10, 12 years old, I still remember the instances. There were several times my mother said, well, David, the trouble is you're just lazy. Mm. Uh, turned out to be a very destructive comment because I said, that's who I am. And I said to myself, gee, if I don't work hard, I'm going to end up on the streets. And I saw myself as a lazy person had to overcome it. Well, anybody who knows me knows I'm constantly working. Mm. So that was a label. And when we label kids, they take it in as who they are. Now, if she would have said, you ha you're having a hard time getting your homework done on time, that's a behavior. Hmm. then we could have done something. So I think we have to be careful about labeling. The other thing is we have to legitimize their feelings. Hmm. So I have a story in which I'm not proud about, but I think it's very uh, revealing. When my son was about four years old, five years old, he went down a slide and hit the back of his head and the edge of the slide. I was crying. I rushed over and I said, oh, Jeffrey, you're not hurt. And with tears running down his face, he said, how do you know how I feel? Only I know how I feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he had me. He was right. Uh, what I should have said was, I'm upset that you're hurting. But I was delegitimizing his feelings. Hmm. And we delegitimize it all the time. We say, oh, you shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't, um, your older sister shouldn't be uh, mad at your, uh, your older daughter, shouldn't be mad at her brother just because he's now getting more attention. Well, she's mad. She's envious. That's the way it is. Hmm. I was reading so, a book. Yeah, apologies. Huh? I was reading a book called Toxic Positivity. Uh, where it talks about this notion of not being present to the emotion that's emerging, but really quickly brushing it off with a with a positive emotion. Yes, yes. You you ought to be feeling this kind of thing. Yes. What you're feeling is what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. I may not like that I'm feeling that way, but I'm feeling that. So I think as a parent, can we focus on behavior, legitimize our feelings, and can we also be open to our own feedback? Can we say, hey, am I doing something that's uh, causing a problem? Hmm. 